Welcome everybody uh, to this uh, hands-on workshop of Ansible Linux Automation by Red Hat. Uh, I can see you're all still coming in. I can just imagine you're, you're just coming off the back of your other meetings there. So uh, what we'll do is I'm just going to run through a little bit of housekeeping first, introduce who's here, and then what we'll do is get cracking into this hands-on workshop because there's, there's lots to do and some really good stuff. So let me start by saying, uh, again, welcome. My name is Michael Boyle. I look after the Crossvale business here in Europe. Also joining me today is our principal architect at Crossvale, and that's Brett Kulga, uh, who's just come on the video there. And also uh, here in over in sunny Spain, I believe, Colin, is our senior consultant and expert in all things Ansible, Colin Caprusu. So also welcome himself and thank you guys for, for joining today. Again, I can see you all still uh, coming in. So I thank you for your time today. I know it seems like you're taking a, a big chunk of an afternoon you know, to do this, but I really think you'll find the value of this is enormous. We run many types of events. This is of course a hands-on workshop, which I think is great. And in the past, if you've come and joined us before, we've been on tour and Colin has, has been with us on, on that particular tour where we've been on site and you've, you've come on and we've been at hotel locations, things like this, and it's been great. But in the days we're in today in COVID, we're just going to move to this new world in this virtual world and we're running this together with Red Hat uh, on this virtual workshop instead. And I believe you'll get just as much out of it. And I think we can use all the tools that this webinar product will bring to us. We're using Zoom today and of course I think we're all familiar with using Zoom, whether it's at home or for business. And But what you might not be as familiar with maybe is some of the tools where you can interact with us. You're all currently on mute, and this meeting is currently being recorded, and we can make this available in our on-demand. And we've got an events portfolio that you can go to. If you go to crossvale.com slash events, you can see all of the other webinars that we've done as well. And please avail of those because there's some really good ones, particularly on Ansible. But this has been recorded. As I say, it'll be made available. But whilst you're on mute, you can always use the Q&A. So what you can do is store some questions, get some good questions. You know, you'll have even questions of how do I do this in the live moment? And if, if it's a really good question that we think everyone should hear as well, we can actually just unmute you and just ask, get you to an, ask that question to everybody. But rather than have lots of voices in the room, we will keep you, we'll keep you on mute for the time being. And then, as I say, as the time and the day progresses, we can unmute a few of you just to have little groups. And if we feel there's a need, we also can put you into a breakout room where you could have a bit of a, a chat if there's one particular topic that comes up and maybe one of our team or the Red Hat team can go and have a conversation with you as you come in. Okay, so that's roughly what's going on today, but let me just break into the agenda a little bit further. Let me just move the slide down here. So we're just gonna do a very brief comp company introduction. I will keep it brief, honestly. Um, and then what we'll do is hand over to Brett, which is what you're all really here for, and Colin, which is to get a quick introduction to Ansible. For those of you who still might be a little bit new to Ansible, um, whether it's the upstream version or the downstream baked version from Red Hat, really give you an introduction to where Ansible automation is and what that really means. And then we'll get into the workshop. And the workshop itself, guys, is around about 90 minutes, but it's plus or minus. It's how much and how fast you go along there and what questions and things like that. But then around about the 4.30 mark GMT, of course, we'll do a sort of a conclusions and a wrap up and sort of take those bulk of questions, answer some of those questions. And again, along the way, we will answer some of those questions anyway. I'll be looking at some of them and uh, helping Brett and Colin out there with those. And then we surely will be wrapping up by uh, 1700 hours, uh, but probably a bit before that as well. OK, but again, I'm sure you've got some other commitments going on as well, and that's totally understandable. So the main thing is get as much out of this as you can have questions. And we're here forever anyway to take any more questions going on from there. So very, very quickly, who is Crossvale? If you've been to some of our webinars before, you'll be familiar with what Crossvale do and how intrinsically connected we are with Red Hat as a significant partner of theirs. But what we believe we are is 
shortening your route to success, your path, your journey that you're on. Today, we're talking about automation, connecting to Ansible, but just as easily, we could be talking about looking at where your application stack is. Are you looking at monolith? Are you looking at taking these to microservices, things like this? And again, this is where Crossvail are very, very strong in the OpenShift world, private cloud in the open stack world. And then the layers that come above it when you're looking at Fuse, AMQ, all of these good areas in terms of as a structure that fit on top of OpenShift and OpenStack. And really what it is, we can very be blase and talk about the digital transformation, but it's really focusing down on modernization and the modernization of your infrastructure, leading itself to modernization of your applications. And we really break that, guys, into simple packages of day zero into day one, and then finally day two. And day zero is all about building it, configuring, enabling, not just enabling the products or solutions to work, but enabling your teams. Day one then is all about the products are there, they're working, but very regularly we're brought in to say, can you evaluate the stack? Can you evaluate what we are trying to do here in our business to take us along that journey? And can you really help us deliver what it, what it means to us in our business? And then finally, day two, and very importantly, is we can come in and actually manage all of that infrastructure for you. So whether you're looking at Ansible, whether you're looking at RHEL itself and the satellite and the automation and management that sits upon RHEL, or whether you're then building up the layers of the cloud and OpenStack, or in fact, you want OpenShift and you want all of this ecosystem to be managed 24 seven, 365, Crossfail can be here in your infrastructure, whether you're bare metal, whether you're private cloud, hybrid, multi-tenant, all of these different real world environments, that's what Crossvale comes in and helps you on. Again, with a stable, secure and scalable solution, just like the Red Hat solution delivers. So in essence, what we do is we split into four main areas that you would often see in the consulting area, that traditional consulting area that is known and loved. But what we do is the next step is to deliver actual solutions. So they're end-to-end -end solutions. So it's not just a case of putting OpenShift in on a private cloud, but what are the applications and can you actually build those applications for us? Can you take the applications we've currently got and cre create an omni-layer over the top of these so it's nearly an ecosystem so that we have sort of a one in input and output rather than all of these different ins and outs that come along. So it's all of the layers that we work on and that's what we really build in the solutions. Managed services, as I just spoke to, the 24 seven bespoke solution that says, what environment do you have that you need looking after that you can get on with your day-to-day -day job and let that infrastructure be taken care of at a prescriptive measure so that we're looking ahead always as to what the problems can be and the challenges and actually fixing them before you're even waking up in the morning to get on with your day job. That's the type of managed services that we have. And of course, we're also available to actually sell you, let's say, the subscriptions of Red Hat as well. You can come to us for this whole end-to-end -end solution. So it's not just the consulting, but it's also right over to the subscriptions as well. And we do this by a very simple methodology of enablement through to maintain. Really, it's a problem gain. So what you can't deliver someone a solution unless you actually understand their problem in the first place. And the, one of the biggest you know, purposes of, of the Bretts and the Collins of the world is to look at what is your problem? Because only then we can actually look at what is your solution. And that's how you measure the, 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 the gain that you get out of having that uh, solution go in. And that's how we look at the problems end to end. And what we're able to do, and really it, it comes to, to, down to today as well as to looking at Ansible, is we can actually give full package solutions to you. So it's not just a case of, well, we can come in and do 14 days consulting, but we go one step ahead and say, 
we actually understand what your problems often are because we work on these every day of our business. And so what we've been able to do is package up the solution around Ansible in this case and actually be able to deliver a fixed scope with a fixed cost, with a fixed term time, with fixed outcomes so that you know what to expect when it starts and when it finishes. And that really gives you a lot of confidence as to what you're actually buying into as well. So we're here to help you do it yourself, but we're here to do it for you and mentor you. And we're here to actually manage the whole program for you. So it's all about what is it you want? And that's what I hope you'd come to Crossvale for. In what we do and how, what Crossvale really works in, you can see some of the customers we work for, very strong in the banking sector and things like this. But you can see the core areas from RHEL itself all the way through to JBoss, you know, picking up your Ansible, your satellite, your OpenShift and your OpenStack. And all of these, we've got events that you can come and listen to on demand. So, in terms of our working with Red Hat and why we're here today, we're an advanced partner here in EMEA and in America of our global business, we're a premier apex partner of Red Hat. And to that end, year over year, we've been winning uh, leading edge awards from Red Hat from 2018 all the way through to last year, 2020, winning the leading edge partner award as well. So these things we're very, very proud of. But here in EMEA, Consisting of those four letters, what do we do? Well, we work on site, of course, at the moment remote, but we work on site right across EMEA from Cork, where I'm based here and talking to you from today, through to Qatar, where Colin has been uh, recently just prior to the lockdown, down to Cape Town, where we've worked in many of the banks in South Africa. And we, we have a complete US mirror site that does equal work over in the States as well. And you are global businesses that we're talking to today. So you often find that the work we do in, Amir, in EMEA, we can also then mirror out into the US as well. So that's very important. And in terms of engaging, we do everything from discovery calls through to POCs, and uh, full-blown sows to really under, under uh, determine what it is you're looking for in your business. So we do the launch pads, as we've mentioned, and we'll, you can see here the one of Ansible that we have. I am more than happy to get on with anybody and walk you through these in detail. It's not what today's about at all. And I'm only just allowing people, more people to, to come in as I uh, just take some of the minutes to explain some of this is these are the type of routes that we take to when we solve in the problems, particularly say with Ansible. And what you get here are the deliverables that you look at in terms of, are you standard? In other words, are you at a starting point looking for a long-term strategy? Are you at foundation? Are you looking at HA, high availability? Well, that's a completely different package that you can buy into from us. Or are you looking for creating a center of excellence through automation? Do you have service now as an ITSM and you're looking to build again this ecosystem around your, your business? Well, that again is something that we specialize in as well. So all of these are very specific uh, packages that we have built around Ansible. So again, before I hand over to Brett, um, I just do remind you, we host many events. This is particularly a workshop, but if you go into crossfail.com slash events, you can see some of the other Ansible and OpenShift and OpenSAC events that we have done and also ones that we're planning to do in the coming uh, season of Q1. So looking forward to you coming on those again. But for now, I'm going to end this and I know you're glad and get over to Brett and let's kick off with this workshop. So thank you for your time, just for listening for those few minutes. And Brett, let me hand over to yourself. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Um, really do appreciate that. Uh, I do appreciate everybody joining today. Uh, I also wanna thank our partners over at Red Hat for helping us uh, set up this workshop as well. Today, uh, just kind of give you a run through of, of what to expect. Uh, we'll be doing some hands-on Ansible work. Uh, I will be assigning um, labs uh, for each and every one of you. So uh, I'll be sharing that link here in just a few minutes. Uh, the expectation is that you'll be able to SSH and use your web browser to reach these different services to walk through the, the demo environments. Uh, we'll do some lecture. Uh, I'll do some presentations around Ansible, what Ansible is, how it functions, 
and then get more deep into the weeds on the specifics of how do you work with Ansible. And we'll intersperse all of that with exercises as we kind of go through the, the process. As Mike mentioned, this is about a 90 minute exercise. If I don't talk too much, we'll actually hit those 90 minutes. Um, I can't promise that I won't. I, I like this topic. I like automation. Um, and I do tend to get rather passionate about it. So please bear with me on, on that as well. Uh, I'm going to be turning off my video and switching systems just so I can have better control over the environment. But I just wanted to make sure that uh, everybody had a chance to see this ugly mug and understand who's going to be droning into their ear for the next couple of hours. So um, no worries, you don't have to sit here and stare at me all day long. Um, but uh, with that, uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to cut over and share the presentation in just a second. All right. All right, there we go. Quick mic check, make sure everybody can hear me. I think we're good. So I'm going to share a link um, for everybody to kind of enroll with the workshop before we even get started, just to kind of ease you through that. Um, essentially, you're going to come up to ansibleworkshop.crossvale ocp.com. I will share this in chat um, so everybody can uh, kind of see that. If I pull this up properly, where's my chat window? Um, so everybody can come out here. Please enter your name and your email address, and that will assign you a, a lab. And I'm having trouble finding my chat window. Give me just a second. Zoom is spread out across two different desktops and four, 40 different windows. So uh, let me get this arranged a little bit better here. There we go. All right, not to the panelists. There we go, all right. So there's the link. Um, hopefully you can all see that in chat now. Uh, feel free to hop on over there and, like I said, fill in your name and your email um, and you'll be assigned a um, a lab number and all of the instructions and all of that will, will follow from there. So while you guys are kind of working through that, let me uh, go ahead and, and start the presentation. So like I said, we're going to talk a little bit about Ansible high level, kind of go through some use cases, why automation, uh, all of those types of things, maybe open up the horizon a little bit on you know what you can do in your own environment around uh, implementing uh, an automation workflow. And, and as Mike pointed out earlier in the discussion, you can go a long ways uh, with automation. You can do a lot of different things with it, but most people start pretty small. Or they're, they're automating everyday tasks that are generally fairly simple, but uh, repetitive, right? So just to save some time. And that generally grows into more of a, uh, a sequence of events, or you start sharing out your automation with other engineers in your environment. And then you start to see that you need some control over this. So people are doing some standardization, doing things the same way. You might start introducing tools like Tower, which help you with those types of integrations. Uh, and then maybe as you mature further along, as Mike mentioned, you start building the center of excellence where you're bringing in different lines of business or different um, parts of the organization that are all building out into a, a, um, a very structured and well-defined 
standardized platform for automating not just IT systems, but doing integrations with other solutions um, and really expanding out beyond the boundaries of just uh, you know simple configuration management or or orchestration or you know whatever those those early use cases might have been. So as I mentioned, we'll we'll be going through the next couple of hours. Uh, I will try to give you some breaks. Uh, generally, the exercise portions of this is a is a good time to do that. I do tend to talk a lot, so uh, I I would uh, appreciate uh, maybe Mike and and Colin keeping me honest and saying, hey, why don't we, why don't we take a quick five minute coffee break? Um, what I hope you guys get out of this today, though, is really just an, uh, an enhanced understanding of not just Ansible, but the principles behind automation and why it's important, what the value is that it brings to you as an engineer, uh, what it can bring to your business or your organization or your particular line of business. So we're going to talk about the Ansible automation platform and kind of what Red Hat defines as, um, as this kind of packaged uh, material. And, and they've really gone out of their way to build a larger ecosystem of solutions around the core Ansible product. And we'll, we'll take a little bit of deeper dive into what that looks like and, and the reasons why they've done that. We'll play with uh, we'll play with doing some actual Ansible work. You'll um, you'll see how it functions, how you how you control different systems with it, how you can gather information out of it, those types of things. We'll go into some of the core concepts uh, underlying Ansible, and and actually creating automation with Ansible. And then we'll take a quick look at Tower. Uh, generally speaking, that's an entire afternoon of its own. So we'll just talk about some of the feature sets, and we'll we'll give a quick deep uh, or a quick dive into just some of the things that you can do um, with Tower. Now, uh, your labs, uh, lab environments have uh, Tower instances available to them, so you can you can play along at home, so to speak. But uh, again, we will we will not really be touching a lot on on that. So just a, a quick note based on a question I just saw here in chat. Um, as far as the labs are concerned, they are available to you um, for an extended period of time. Uh, generally speaking, uh, I like to give four to five hours after the presentation to let people wrap up. Uh, this is a good one uh, just because it's at the end of the day for um, the folks over there in, in EMEA to, to kind of wind down and, and kind of get back to it and relax a little bit and, and be able to go through the exercises. So uh, you can expect that um, the labs will be available up until about, uh, I would say, 10 p.m. GMT today. And uh, so feel free to, you know, come back to it if I rush through something, you know, or, or, or something wasn't didn't quite click, um, you'll, you'll have the opportunity to come back to that. All right, so let's start talking about kind of the overall solution, the Ansible automation platform. Why do we want automation in our environment, right? And the, the simple answer is because we have re repetitive tasks. Generally speaking, these are low level tasks that aren't very complex, but we do them again and again, and they take our time. And why should we do that? Um, if if we have a better tool to help us kind of put that off to the side and put it out of our minds so that's that's the germ that's the seed of where automation happens let's let's reduce these repetitive tasks that we have to do as users and as i mentioned 
users are really starting to expand when we talk about the Ansible world. And this is one of the great things about Ansible I'll get into in a little bit. But it's not just your necessarily your, your infrastructure team or your operations team that can benefit from automation, right? The, your, your typical low hanging fruit uh, use cases are simply um, just the tip of the iceberg. And you can really spread this across the organization and drive those, derive those benefits uh, everywhere. And so we'll talk a little bit more about integrations and, and how all of that works uh, as we kind of walk through this. I'll give you some real world examples and you can kind of hopefully get a, a clearer picture of you know, how, does, how does this spread? How can you leverage this tooling and these skills that you're picking up uh, to really benefit not just you, but your entire organization? <clears throat> so as I mentioned, uh, you, there's probably a collective of automation going on uh, throughout your organization today already. Uh, I know that, uh, for instance, lots of network engineers have done, um, you know, their own custom batch or a bash or, or Perl scripting. Uh, you know, these days the, the DevOps teams are doing a lot of um, Ansible already, or maybe it's all Python based, uh, or maybe they're doing things out of tools like Jenkins or GitLab or something like that. Um, there's a lot of vendor provided automation tools, right? And you see this a lot in the infrastructure space. Uh, you know, every vendor out there that's that's got um, any kind of footprint in the hardware space generally has a product associated with it that does um, orchestration and configuration. Um, and, and they call them, you know, single panes of glass, but they're really bound to the, the infrastructure that that vendor is selling, right? So um, we see automation in bits and pieces kind of everywhere, but that doesn't really help us come together and, and discuss it with a common platform. And that's really where Ansible starts to shine. So the three things that have kind of made Ansible stand out from the rest of the pack when it comes to automation tools, um, as you can see here on the slide, it's simplicity, uh, it's power, and the, the agentlessness of it. Um, and I'll just touch on these real quick. So simple, it's YAML based. Uh, once you kind of get the hang of the language um, and, and how the, the concepts work within, within playbooks, uh, it's, it's very easy to interpret, to follow along and to absorb, borrow, um, integrate, all of those types of things. Ansible makes it very simple to use it. Uh, powerful. One of the one of the greatest reasons why you were talking about Ansible today is because of the adoption of it in the community. Uh, from an from an open source perspective, Ansible has really kind of blossomed into this tool that people have been contributing to um, for quite a few years now. And there's so many different um, packages uh, that are available now in the community it can basically do anything and vendors are adding their own packages um what they're, they're actually called modules we'll get into some of the terminology later on uh, but essentially the the entire ecosystem has just blossomed into a, a you know it's got a massive community uh, it's it's starting to really gain traction. When when I first started working with Ansible about oh I don't know six or seven years ago, it was kind of a dark course. Um, we had uh, tools like Puppet and Chef were really kind of at the forefront of the automation and configuration management um, uh, kind of nexus. But um, over the years, Ansible has has really kind of pulled ahead. Um, and again, it's because of that simplicity. It's because of the openness. It's because of the community. Um, and and it's the way it operates as well, which we'll get into a little bit more. Uh, you know, it doesn't have, it's not quite as heavy. It doesn't require as many components as some of the other tools out there. And that makes it easier to deploy and get So what can you do with Ansible? Well, 
it's pretty clear now I've already said a couple of the, you know, the easy use cases are things like provisioning servers and, and doing, you know, configuration management of, of systems. But the truth is Ansible gives you the, the opportunity to take advantage of just about every aspect of your daily IT life um, in various ways. And due to that spread in community and that adoption rate, we're not just talking servers. We're talking essentially any device that can be connected to and communicated with. Um, it's a bit of an exaggeration, um, but every day that exaggeration becomes smaller and smaller. Uh, the, the amount of things that are, are available and the, the tools and the uh, extensions to Ansible that have been provided by uh, both Red Hat and the community and individual other vendors uh, has really swelled the the types of things that you can do with the, with the product. So <clears throat> this is where we start to open the imagination a little bit, right? And let's stop talking about well, how can I manage my servers or how can I create um, you know a new VM um, in VMware or how can I spin up an EC2 instance in AWS? And let's start looking at end-to-end -end automation, right? Um, and 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 this is where people start to really get excited, right? I can connect to my ITIL systems. I can connect to my um, my inventory management systems. I can connect to my um, IPAM. Uh, I can connect to my security products. I can integrate all of these things together. Whereas below, before this was a, a standalone process, right? I had to go log into system A, system B, system C, all of these different steps. And I had to do them all manually because they're all different systems, right? And the Ans and Ansible can, can bridge that gap. It can be that integration engine um, to bring all those things together. And that's where things start to get really exciting. So alluding to that a little bit, we have this idea of processes, right? Every team has their own process for a particular task, um, whether this is onboarding a new hire into the environment or into the company, whether it's bringing a server online, um, whether it's deploying a, a new application version, right? Uh, it touches, all of those actions touch multiple teams. They all have their processes, their own responsibilities. What automation does is it, it pulls in a centralized point where you are now able to have kind of a standard language for all these different teams to work within. Um, everybody can kind of agree on practice. Uh, everybody can agree on process and everybody can understand what's going on because it's all formalized in this, this automation script, right? And this allows for things like version control and sequencing and on and on and on. So this is where we, we really try to bring these teams together, very similar to uh, what DevOps has been trying to do between um, you know, the operation side and the developer side of, of bringing these teams closer for application deployments. Automation is the same thing with management of your environments, right? So uh, very similar concept there. <clears throat> so what is the Red Hat Ansible automation platform? Well, it's a bit of a mouthful, but essentially it's made up of several components. Um, Ansible engine, which is the core, right? This is the kind of the um, original upstream Ansible. This is where uh, you can go to your, your CLI and and run um, a command against a, a YAML playbook to do some automation, right? Um, so that that's kind of the core. That's that's the piece of the executable that sits inside the the system that runs all of the automation, right? To grow from that, to get off the keyboard, to get off the CLI, and to expand to Teams, you need a product like Tower. Tower brings Ansible into um, uh, 
a higher level of operations, right? You get role-based access controls, you get um, API integrations, you get scheduling, you get workflow builders. Um, there's there's a lot of things that now allow you to scale your Ansible practice, and you just don't have a collection of of you know YAML playbooks sitting on a laptop somewhere. This is now organized, it's controlled, um, and it's shared in the environment. So that's really the, the focal point of bringing your automation together. And then with, uh, with the new advent of um, Red Hat's cloud initiatives, you get uh, a lot more insights into what's going on in your automation environment. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit more at the uh, kind of the, the further end of the presentation because uh, it's really exciting what Red Hat's been doing with kind of giving you a, a collective look at all of your tools that you're running inside your environment, whether it's Ansible Tower or whether it's OpenShift or Satellite or just RHEL um, and how they're bringing all these components together in a, a kind of a one-stop um, look into your into your environments. <clears throat> so like I said, there are many, many different things, systems, integrations, um, cloud providers that that Ansible integrates with, um, works with things that you can automate using these tools. And um, I always tell people that it's it's almost guaranteed that somebody out there has already written something that you're trying to accomplish. So it spend, it's, it's a good spend of time to go and do a little bit of research when you're trying to do something first time with Ansible um, to go see if what, what other people have already done and kind of use that as your springboard. Um, you know, borrow and refine or modify it's it's a lot better than it is just trying to come up with things from scratch. Now, if you're doing something super simple, obviously um, that's no big deal. But once your your automations start to grow and start to get more complex, um, this is where you know the the idea of sharing and borrowing and and um, kind of borrowing to, to to borrow a term from software development where you're actually pulling in reusable modules. Uh, reusable code that has been shared either by the community or other people in your organization. Um, and we'll talk more about how Ansible uh, facilitates that. So there's there's a, a XKCD that I, I should have um, <clears throat> available when I do these talks because I always refer to it. And if you're not I'm familiar with XKCD. It's just a, a web comic, but uh, there's a, a pretty famous uh, one in there where they talk about the the benefits of automation and when does it make sense to automate something over doing it by hand, right? And there's this, this nice little technical graph that they draw. But essentially, <clears throat> the question is, when is this valuable? And it, it gets really easy to prove the value, even if it's something as simple as, you know, you do something five minutes every day. Well, your neighbor does something similar five minutes every day. Your department might do the same thing, right? And these things start to snowball. And then if you automate those and you get your timings right, you start to get some uh, some very, very much, you know, compounding time savings, um, and the the amount of money that you can end up saving in having your people do more important work than this kind of this rote work every day is is quickly paid off for kind of the investment that you make in this in this technology. So, um, you know, it's it. it it's very it's a very interesting conversation when when we start to introduce tower with um with clients because you know it looks like um you know quite a bit of, of an investment but this slide really speaks to the fact that um removing the you know the, the time spent and the efficiencies gained really this thing pays for itself and uh, i see uh 
Colin linked the uh, the XKCD there in chat if you want to go check it out. Thank you, Colin. All right, so let's talk about the core of Ansible, Ansible Engine. And I'm going to kind of go through the introduction. We're going to talk a little bit about what's going on with the labs. Uh, we'll get some time to go check that out. And, um, and then we'll kind of proceed from there. So the, the basic components behind Ansible is the user the guy, the person, the, the, the uh, object of needing to do automation, right? We have, a, we have a desire to do something in the environment. We ask a particular tool, in this case Ansible, to do that automation for us. The way we ask it is by creating, in Ansible's case, what's called a playbook. So it's a YAML file. We create a set of instructions, and then we ask an Ansible to um, to follow out those instructions. Well, some of the things that Ansible needs to know is what am I supposed to run these instructions on? How do I, how do I receive these instructions? And then how do I do the things that I'm supposed to do um, with these instructions, right? So the inventory is pretty self-explanatory. The inventory is a, um, a construct of Ansible that essentially tells it what systems you're going to be managing with this particular play. Um, it's all CLI based, right? So the, the Ansible engine itself is going to be on the CLI and we'll be playing with that um, for the most part today. And then the modules and plugins are the pieces of Ansible that come with the platform or get added in later that allow you to control the systems and devices that you're trying to automate. And as I mentioned, there's thousands of these and the community keeps building more. So it's always a good idea to go check, as I've said before, um, if you're trying to do something new, I, I can almost guarantee you that somebody else has already done it. And I'll give you some ideas of where to go to look for that. Um, and then where do you control things? Well, you can do integrations, you can do uh, you know, your, your public clouds, your private clouds, um, any device that essentially you can access over your network, you can control with, with Ansible. So I had I have this very bad habit of talking over my slides. Um, so I've kind of already introduced all of these things. So I'll probably be skipping through some of these a little bit. But this, um, as I mentioned, playbooks are written in YAML. Uh, YAML is uh, just a, it's a, um, I forget what the term is now, it just, it just went out of my head. But um, essentially, if you're not familiar with YAML, um, it's a very human readable uh, data description language that is um, sp it's space relevant, right? So the spacing in your file matters. Um, it actually stands for yet another markup language, which is uh, you know a little bit ironic. Um, and if you're familiar with JSON, which is another data description language, YAML is actually a superset of, of JSON. So the entire specification of JSON can actually be derived from the YAML specification. Just a little bit of trivia there. So this is an example of a playbook um, and this is a YAML file. Right. Um, so you'll be you'll be working with um, several of these today. So you'll get lots of practice on on kind of how all of this works. I'm not going to necessarily break this down um, in detail, just to, to kind of point out a couple of things here. Um, first of all, the the triple dashes at the start indicate that this is a YAML file. It's convention. Um, We'll talk more about kind of what the other hashes mean as we dive deeper into the playbook. But I want to point out again, you'll see there is a kind of a hierarchy of indentation here. Um, and that's very important when it comes to YAML. Like I said, this is, it's space relevant, right? So um, the the most, most, most times when uh, new people who are working with YAML uh, for the first time, the first thing you're going to get tripped up with is is the spacing. So if you're getting weird errors and that sort of thing, 
make sure you're, you're double checking that. And this becomes especially important if you're cutting and pasting from various sources. Sometimes, you know, you get tabs in there. Sometimes it's, um, it's people use different spacings. Um, and so it can get out of a whack really quickly. So that's just something that I, I like to kind of harp on a little bit. All right, so um, the modules are where Ansible goes to um, control whatever it is that it needs to be doing, right? And uh, when when you're reading a playbook, the module um, kind of jumps out at me now, but at first in my mind, and certainly when I was learning Ansible, it took a bit for me to get a little uh, familiar with, with what that kind of looked like, right? So module in in this specific example and, and this is an excerpt of that playbook that we were looking at the module that's being referenced here is actually the template module um and that is just something that you kind of learn as you're learning to read um ansible and yaml where this stuff lives right and we'll, like i said we'll walk through more of this and and i'm going to keep harping on this um but in this case, this particular task is going to use the template module to perform some sort of, of job. And that's what we're looking at in this particular snippet of the playbook. Now, template is one example of a module. And like I said, there's thousands of them out there and they do everything from you know creating servers in um, AWS to copying files from one system to another to um, integrating with things like um, a rest API or something like that so there's <clears throat> there's you know things that cover the gamut of, of what you can do with with integrating or talking to other systems all right Plugins are an idea that come out of Python. So Ansible underneath the hood is uh, Python based. It's written in Python. And a lot of the, um, the extensions that are added into Ansible are Python extensions. And in this case, um, we see here an example of a plugin, which is this two nice YAML, which is just essentially a Python function call. Um, that will clean up uh, some data that's coming out of the environment. Uh, don't get too hung up on this. This is uh, a little bit more advanced. Um, and it's something that, you know, once you need to understand it, you'll get to the, you'll, you'll be in a position to understand it, right? So um, just to have an understanding of the, you know, this is one of the components um, that makes Ansible tick. All right, so we talked about the inventory a little bit, but we haven't seen an example yet. So this is a um, an example of an inventory file, which is an INI format. Uh, there are a couple of different inventory formats that you can use, but generally speaking, um, today when you're working with core Ansible on the CLI, um, we use an INI type format um, for our inventories. Um, <clears throat> As I mentioned, the, the inventory tells Ansible what systems that you're going to be working with. And here you can see an example of several different types of systems. Um, and you'll notice that there's these, these bracketed headings. Those are called groups. And uh, groups allow you to segment servers in different ways. You can even repeat servers in um, different groups um, in case you need to categorize them multiple different ways. So uh, this is kind of one of those, it's a good housekeeping thing, but it's also uh, a necessity once you start writing Ansible scripts that do behave differently for different types of services. And you really need to spell out, you know, well, this playbook acts against uh, web servers, whereas this playbook acts against my database servers. And so you need to be able to segment those systems um, while still having kind of a centralized point to manage all of your inventory. Um, again, Ansible has uh, not only the ability to control 
many or most uh, provider environments out there, but they can also run out of those environments. So this is a kind of an important distinction, right? So um, Ansible, like I said, may, is, is, is written in Python. So essentially anywhere that you can um, run Python, you can run Ansible. Um, I'll hedge my bets there on Windows a little bit. We'll just say Linux for now, but um, there there are some Ansible um, modules that work with with Windows. And if you've got uh, an environment that's Windows heavy, or you, you have more interest in that, um, certainly feel free to reach out to us, and we can kind of discuss the the Windows specific components of of Ansible, and and how that works in that specific environment. Um, integrations are becoming a much bigger deal with with Ansible, uh, especially as shops start to grow and mature, and they want to um, kind of go back to their systems of record. And uh, the capabilities that Ansible now provides in things like pulling inventory information out of your CMDB or um, being kind of the engine that does the work that a service ticket has um, kicked off. Uh, or doing things like even checking back into CMDBs or into process control, any type of work that was done um, during an automation run, uh, kind of tying all these systems together. Again, this is a, a big value add to the way Ansible functions. Um, so at the end of the day, we want to automate everything. Um, you know, any again, anytime where there's a repetitive task or uh, you know, something that is better left, you know, a long running batch task or something like that. Uh, let's let the automation do that. Let's not tie up valuable engineering time uh, to do rote tasks. I've harped on this um, many, many times already. The, the uh, extensions that are available for Ansible are just massive here. I mean, there's 150 plus Linux modules all, all by themselves. That's not to talk about, um, you know, the the networking world with Cisco and Arista and Jupyter and, and F5s and on and on and on, um, or the Windows side of the house or the integration sides, the different tool sets that we talk to. So um, the ecosystem is massive. All right, so I'm going to talk just real briefly about the different types of uh, communications uh, possibilities with, with Ansible. And this is a more of an abstraction than it is an exact science because depending on your device, um, it could be a little bit different. But generally speaking, the modules that you're going to use to control devices will have kind of the, the communication protocol baked into it. Now, Historically, um, and kind of where, where Ansible started was in this I, uh, um, area of remote execution. So uh, essentially what Ansible does is it opens up an SSH connection to the device that it's trying to control. It um, translates the YAML that you've written into a series of Python scripts. It loads that over on that device and it then um, executes that remotely in the control device. And then once everything is finished, it tears it all down and removes the footprint and the operations from the, the remote device, right? So one of the things that people like to say about Ansible is that it's agentless. In a sense, that's true because it doesn't have an executable that runs on the remote devices all the time. But it does have this, this kind of requirement to be able to execute Python code remotely um, on those devices. And like I said, this is the historical context of where Ansible started. Um, and as it's grown, the control methodology has changed, specifically um, around like networking devices. 
it's become very important to have um, the ability to connect to things that, you know, they might not have a Python um, executable on the device. They might not accept SSH connections. Um, you know, there's, there's all sorts of different devices out there. We connect to them in all sorts of different ways. So um, this, this idea of being able to do a local execution where you're still writing YAML, the, the, the process is still similar, but when you connect to that device, you're connecting you're connecting to it um, via its native method, and then you're sending commands to it via its native interface, right? So, um, whatever that device is, however it's used to um, ingesting commands, Ansible handles that transparently for you. So the same YAML code you write works on those devices. Um, and you don't have to worry about the abstraction of, you know, how do I connect to it? What, what, what's the command language? You know, how do I put the box in command mode or whatever it might be? All of that stuff is taken care of underneath the hood. All right, <clears throat> so I've talked long enough. Um, we're gonna walk through the environment real quick for the lab and we are uh, gonna, make sure that everybody's kind of up and running and uh, has everything that they need. Um, maybe take a, a quick break um, and then we can kind of walk through the, the first exercises. All right. 